When a level control system is not operating the way it should, potential problems can result, like dumping water into the oil line or oil into the water line. There are several possible causes for these operational issues. In this video, I'll detail these issues and give the solutions for each. Hi, I'm Mike with Kimray, where we help energy producers solve their biggest control challenges. The main function of a level controller, like the Gen 3 here, is to detect the level inside of a production vessel and communicate to the dump valve when to open or close, keeping the level at the desired point or within a specific range. When the controller or valve is not operating properly, the symptoms can look the same for various root causes, so determining the cause of a problem can take some investigation. This video will provide a very comprehensive troubleshooting guide, but you can quickly jump to your specific issues using the time codes listed in the description below. Let's get started. When the liquid level reaches its set point, either at the top of the span or the bottom of the span, the controller should actuate, meaning it sends an output signal or vents. The controller should actuate somewhere along the length of the displacer. If the liquid level goes beyond the top of the displacer, but the controller hasn't actuated, or on the other end, if the liquid level drops below the bottom of the displacer and the controller hasn't actuated, this is a problem. This first one may seem obvious, but it can happen. And that is, you might not have any pressure in your supply line. A good indicator of this is a supply pressure gauge reading zero. Check your supply source and make sure it's on and regulated to between 15 and 45 PSI. The controller not actuating may just be a result of the level and or span settings needing to be adjusted. If liquid is overrunning the top, turn the spring adjustment knob counterclockwise to increase the spring tension to make the actuation happen at a lower level. If liquid is dropping below the bottom of the displacer, turn the spring adjustment knob clockwise to decrease the spring tension to make the actuation happen at a higher level. You may also need to reduce the span if you're in snap mode, this can be done by sliding the fulcrum towards the center of rotation of the torque lever. In throttle mode, span setting would typically not be the issue, but as a rule of thumb, the position for the least amount of span in throttle mode is the middle tick mark, but adjusting it inward or outward from the center tick mark could reduce the span depending on the application conditions. For a fail close valve, the level controller should be set up in direct mode, and for a fail open valve, indirect mode. If set up incorrectly, the controller will not actuate the way you want it to. Just move the pilot lever from one side to the other. This chart found in the installation operation and maintenance manual is an easy reference for which side the pilot lever should go on when in snap or in throttle. For your convenience, this information is also given on the inside of the Gen 3 cover. If, by adjusting the spring tension and span settings, you're still not able to alleviate the problem at both ends, this could be an indication that the displacer is undersized. When interfacing, if the specific gravity differential is below 0.2, buoyant force from the displacer may not be sufficient to actuate the controller. A larger Kimray displacer may be necessary. Over time, specific gravities in your system can change, which can account for a controller that was working fine, but then started having these issues. Kimray's standard displacer is designed to sense specific gravity differentials as low as 0.2. If you have a lower differential, Kimray offers larger displacers that can sense down to a 0.1 differential. When switching out displacers, you may also need to change out the level adjusting spring, which brings us to our next potential cause, the wrong size level adjustment spring. Your displacer may be the right size, but you could have the wrong spring. Various combinations of displacer sizes and extension arm lengths could necessitate a heavier spring. This chart located in the Gen 3 technical specifications document specifies which spring you should use based on the displacer size and extension arm lengths. There are only two springs that could be used, the standard and the heavy spring. Moisture or solids like sand, dirt, or errant Teflon tape inside of the pilot or communication holes inside the casting could prevent the controller from actuating. 
The supply gas should be clean and dry. The Gen 3 comes with a supply gas filter, but if that's not enough, we recommend installing an additional filter and or drip pot or scrubber on the supply gas line. The pilot plug inside allows for very precise control and low emissions, but contaminants can prevent the pilot plug from moving or restrict full range of motion. To check for contaminants, remove the pilot from the controller and disassemble. Check for any solids or moisture. Clean and dry the components before reassembly. Similarly, the supply line could be blocked due to moisture buildup. If there's a dip or low spot in the line, water can collect and freeze, causing a complete blockage of supply air. Disconnect the lines and clean them out. Ensure there are no dips in the lines where moisture could collect and pool. If there's pressure downstream in the vent line due to a gas gathering system downstream, and that pressure is greater than the supply pressure, the level controller won't vent. Increase the supply pressure, but no more than 45 PSI, or reduce the downstream pressure of the gas gathering system. If there's an obstruction inside the vessel, not allowing full range of motion of the arm or displacer, this could prevent the controller from actuating. One possible restriction to the arm's range of motion could be the collar inside the vessel being too long or the diameter too small. If this is the case, you can try minimizing the span to get actuations within the smaller travel range. Likewise, make sure there's a clearance for the displacer to travel its full stroke inside the vessel. If there isn't, you can try switching the displacer orientation from vertical to horizontal or vice versa or adding or removing arm extensions to avoid the obstructions. If the displacer is located where it's getting emulsion dumped on it, this could hold the displacer down and keep the controller from actuating. To remedy this, if there's room in the vessel, add or remove an extension arm to change the location of the displacer. If there's a lot of sand in your system, it can build up inside the vessel over time to the point where it restricts the downward movement of the displacer. In this case, you'll need to shut in the vessel and remove the sand. Solids like paraffins can build up in the collar and in the level controller connection where the arm rotates. Over time, the buildup can be so much that it restricts the movement of the arm, not allowing the controller to actuate. With the Gen 3, you can check for this by removing the cleanout port plug in the back of the connection to inspect for and clean out obstructions. Always bleed the vessel pressure down completely before loosening and removing this plug. If you have the level and span set correctly, and the controller is actuating when it should, but the liquid level keeps rising too far when the valve should be dumping, or the level keeps lowering too much when the valve should be closed, the cause could be associated with the level controller, the valve itself, or the vessel. Here are 12 potential causes starting with those related to the level controller. Inside the pilot or the communication holes in the controller, any blockages present could slow down the flow of gas to output or vent, keeping the valve from opening or closing as fast as it should. To check for contaminants, remove the pilot from the controller and disassemble. Check for any solids or moisture. Blow out the supply, output, and vent communication holes throughout the controller to ensure they are clear. Clean and dry the pilot components before reassembling. If the supply lines coming into the controller are impeded by liquid or other contaminants, the flow of supply gas could be slowed down. If the supply gauge fluctuates down when the controller sends output gas, this may be an indication that the supply lines are restricted. Remove the lines and clean them out. Ensure there are no dips in the lines where moisture could collect and pool. If the pressure of the supply gas is too low, it may not be able to create sufficient force in the actuator to open the valve fully in a fail close valve or to close the valve fully in a fail open valve. Try increasing the supply gas pressure to see if that fixes the issue. Make sure not to adjust the pressure higher than 45 PSI which is the maximum allowable for the Gen 3 pilot. Pressures above that could potentially rupture the diaphragms inside the pilot. 
In some applications, the vent rate through the Gen 3 pilot may just be less than what you need. If you want to speed up the vent rate, Kimray offers a quick exhaust fitting, which bypasses the pilot during the vent cycle, so the valve can return to its fail position faster. If there is pressure downstream in the vent line due to a gas gathering system, the venting rate could be slower than normal because it's having to push against the downstream pressure as it exits the controller. Additionally, this downstream pressure will not allow the valve actuator to fully vent its pressure. If connected to a fail close valve, there's a possibility that the valve won't close fully if the actuator spring doesn't have enough force to act against the remaining pressure. For the same reason, a fail open valve might not be able to open fully. Increase the supply pressure, but no more than 45 PSI, or reduce the downstream pressure of the gas gathering system. When in throttle mode or trying to hold a small span in snap mode, the ideal displacer orientation is horizontal because you get more change in displacement per fluid level change. So the controller reacts sooner than it would in vertical orientation. If the controller's been in service for a long time without the elastomers being replaced, the diaphragms in the pilot may have stiffened to the point that they won't fully flex. If you suspect this is the case, remove the pilot from the controller, disassemble, and replace all the elastomers. We offer full repair kits containing all soft components that should be replaced at regular service intervals. An undersized valve could allow the vessel to overfill because it can't dump the liquid fast enough. An oversized valve could be dumping too quickly not giving adequate time for the actuator to fully close the valve before the liquid falls below a critical level. Double check the sizing of the valve to ensure adequate flow rate for process conditions and replace the valve if necessary. If your fail closed valve won't open or if your fail open valve won't close, it may have a ruptured actuator diaphragm, which is allowing the supply gas into both chambers of the actuator. The best indicator of this will be gas continuously coming out of the valve's actuator vent plug. To fix this, block and bleed the valve, then open the actuator and replace the diaphragm. Now this is a rare occurrence, but it's a possibility to consider if nothing else has fixed the situation, and that is an obstruction inside the valve itself. Sometimes foreign objects make their way into a vessel or line and can get caught inside the valve, restricting its motion not allowing the valve to close fully or open fully. To determine whether this could be the issue, block and bleed the valve and remove the trim to inspect for any obstructions. If there's an obstruction inside the vessel, not allowing full range of motion of the arm or displacer, this can restrict the actuation of the controller, not allowing full output or full vent flow. One possible restriction to the arm's range of motion could be the collar inside the vessel being too long or the diameter too small. If this is the case, you can try minimizing the span to get actuations within a smaller range of travel. Likewise, make sure there's clearance for the displacer to travel its full stroke inside the vessel. If there isn't, you can try switching the displacer orientation from vertical to horizontal or vice versa, or adding or removing arm extensions to avoid the obstructions. If the displacer is located where it's getting emulsion dumped on it, this could cause erratic actuations from the controller. To remedy this, if there's room in the vessel, add or remove an extension arm to change the location of the displacer. If there's a lot of sand in your system, it can build up inside the vessel over time to the point where it restricts the downward movement of the displacer. In this case, you'll need to shut in the vessel and remove the sand. Solids like paraffins can build up in the collar and in the level controller connection where the arm rotates. Over time, the buildup can be so much that it restricts the movement of the arm, not allowing the controller to send full output or vent fully. With the Gen 3, you can check for this by removing the cleanout port plug in the back of the connection to inspect for and clean out obstructions. Remember, always bleed the vessel pressure down completely before loosening and removing this plug. If your Gen 3 is constantly sending output or venting gas nonstop, there's something wrong. 
The amount of gas that vents during each actuation should be no more than what was in the valve actuator. Keep in mind though that in throttle mode the controller outputs small amounts and vents small amounts more frequently in order to keep the level consistent. So you will need to differentiate between normal throttle operation and continuous venting. If your Gen 3 is sending output or venting continuously, here are the possible causes and solutions. If any O-rings or diaphragms have been damaged, gas could be able to travel to the vent or output when they shouldn't. If the supply pressure has been set to greater than 45 PSI, this could rupture the diaphragms in the pilot. Inspect pilot O-rings and diaphragms and replace if necessary. If particles, Teflon tape, wet gas, or any other obstructions have made their way into the pilot, the pilot plug can stick in one position or not fully seat, allowing gas to flow by. Clean the pilot plug and seat and ensure the filter is clean. Instrument gas may need upstream filtration or moisture removal. In the Gen 3, the only gas that should ever be emitting is through the vent port if it's set up to vent to atmosphere, or no emissions at all if you have it set up to capture vent gas. If your Gen 3 is emitting gas from somewhere other than the vent port, like out of the bottom of the pilot or out the breather hole in the top of the pilot, it's likely an indication that the O-rings or diaphragms in the pilot have been damaged. Inspect the pilot O-rings and diaphragms and replace if necessary. If the oil level in your vessel seems to be maintaining at the desired level within the sight glass range, but somehow oil is making it into the gas outlet line in the vessel, you may have an issue of foaming oil. Foaming oil is not dense enough for the displacer to sense its level inside the vessel. The displacer senses the actual liquid oil level, so if the foam continues to rise, it could eventually exit the vessel through the gas outlet line. You typically won't see an indication of foaming oil in the sight glass because it's only happening inside the vessel. If you suspect this might be the issue, defoamers or other chemicals can be used to help prevent foaming, but are just temporary solutions. The cause for the foaming could be that there are contaminants in the oil flow stream. For further help, contact the experts at your local Kimray store or authorized distributor.